What's up guys? So my wife and I have been living here on our off-grid property on 32 acres here in Tennessee for about two years now. And for the last 15 months, we've been running off of our larger solar system. Now this isn't the first solar system we built. We actually lived in a bus that we built out ourselves with a much smaller solar system. Then our van was our second solar system build, again, much smaller. So this was our first solar build out of this scale. So about a year ago, we gave you a full walkthrough of this system. But now that we're a little over a year, about 15 months later, I wanna kinda of give a feedback video of what our thoughts are living on this for so long now, and if there's any changes that we would make. And over the next 20 minutes, there's gonna be a lot of solar or electrical terms of watt hours, voltage, amp hours, all sorts of things. And recently we had a few people reach out to us and say like, hey, sometime could you go into a little bit of a description of this? And while we don't have a time for a full deep dive because that's not what this video is, I do think it'd be fun to just take a quick solar school on some of the terms we're gonna be talking about. All right, so first up in our quick solar school rundown is volts. So you can think of volts like the pressure of the electricity being ran through. And in most solar use cases or household use cases, volts are going to be in 12, 24, 48, 120, or 240, with 120 and 240 being in what's called AC power, 12, 24, 48, being in DC power. And with that leads us to AC and DC power, the famed Nikola Tesla or Thomas Edison. While Edison gets all of the fame, it was Tesla's AC power that has sprung us into the electrical world that we live in now. Ultimately, both of these are just types of current. Don't really worry about that. In simplicity, think of AC power just in your household, anything you're plugging into, and DC power being anything with a battery. So our solar system is charging a battery and it's all at that point DC power until we're consuming the power in our household and now it's AC power. And yes, side note, even though you're plugging your phone into the wall, it's actually consuming DC power because it has a battery and that little charging block that you're using is converting that AC power back into DC power for your phone to use. Next up is amps and that is measuring the flow rate of the energy that's passing through. The main importance of knowing this is this is a measure, really a safety measure of how much flow rate a device or a cable can actually take without it becoming dangerous from its heat. When so like a wire or a cable or an extension cord example, the smaller that is, the less amps it can take or the less heat resistant it is. The larger you get, the more amps can pass through it safely. All right, and now that I got you all amped up on amps, we have watts. What? What? <laughs> And watts put simply is the measure of the power that's actually being consumed. This is probably what most people are familiar with. If you think of like the watts of the light bulb that you're using, when we all started changing away from incandescent bulbs, it was like, oh my goodness, these only use five watts instead of 60. Uh, so that's what we're talking about here. And lastly, I'll just plug a really important formula for if you're doing any calculations with this stuff and you can adjust this formula to kind of make other formulas and that's watts equals amps times volts, or amps times volts gives you watts. So if you're plugging something in your house and it's 120 volts and it's one amp, that means it's 120 watts. Two amps, 240 watts, that simple. And you again, you can kind of plug this formula around to get amps or volts out of it as well. Quick review of each part of our solar system before we dive into our feelings on them. So behind me is our solar array, and we have 12 400 watt solar panels, which rates us for a total of up to 4,800 watts of solar output. Terms we didn't cover before, but these are strung in series then parallel. So meaning three of the panels are in series, another three are in series, then those are tied into parallel. Then the next three series, next three series, then parallel. So it basically makes two different arrays. So that means each side of six in our solar array go over to our solar shed on different cable. We took about six months to kind of feel out where the best location for our solar array would be. 
here it is. <laughs> and it sits at about a 30 degree angle, which is right in the middle for Tennessee, 45 degrees being optimal in the winter, 15 degrees being optimal in the summer. We split the middle and did it at 30 degrees. And it is facing south, but slightly southwest because here on our property, that was the best orientation for it. So behind me is our battery. What the battery does is it takes the power generated by the solar panels and stores it so that we can use it when the solar panels aren't generating enough electricity for our usage. So you're gonna hear batteries talked about in voltage, amp hours, watt hours, all sorts of things. And while these are all important in specking your system out, ultimately when you're talking about storage capacity, the easiest way to look at it is watt hours. And that's because watt hours are consistent no matter what voltage your system is. And this unit behind me is a single unit battery. Everything's tied together, it's plug and play, and it's a 48 volt battery. And it has 9,600 watt hours of storage capacity. So in an example of what this actually means, if you had a 100 watt continuous load being ran off of this battery at 100%, and when I say continuous load, it's not a refrigerator. Refrigerator shuts off and on. Whereas a continuous load, 100 watts all the time, this can run that for 96 hours because it's 9,600 watt hours. And back in here is our inverter charger. So this is what actually takes the power, whether it's coming from our solar panels or from our battery and converts it into AC power for our usage and the charging portion of it. It takes the power, whether it's coming from the solar panels or a generator hookup, or even an on-grid hookup and charges our battery from it. But spec-wise, we'll only go into output, and this has a 6,000 watt inverter. So we can use 6,000 watts of continuous power on this inverter. And lastly, while it's not technically tied into our main solar system, I do wanna give you a full overview of our entire system on our property. And that's our Blue Eddy system that we use in our cabin. And that powers continuously our internet, which is our Starlink system, some deep freezers and a chest fridge, and then any other power tools that we're running over here. All right, so there's our quick explanation and overview of our system. And after running this fully off grid for 15 months, what are our thoughts? Now, just to preface, today is not a sponsored video. While we're talking about the brand Shop Solar that we worked with to build all of this out, and our previous videos were technically sponsored by them, we always give super genuine reviews about our thoughts on it, and today's video isn't sponsored at all, and you'll probably see that it doesn't veer too far away from our original one. So starting off with our 4,800 watt solar array behind me, this has been friggin' perfect for us. If in theory our battery in our solar shed was at zero, this thing with good sun could power it up to 100 in right around two hours. Even on cloudy days, in most situations, it's still slowly charging our battery or minimally offsetting our power usage. So the battery is just floating right around where it was before. But obviously that's in regular use case. If we turn something on like an air conditioning, that wouldn't be the case on a cloudy day. So this 4,800 watt array for our needs on our property has been perfect for us. And I do want to call out separately, uh, just using higher quality solar panels like these 400 watt solar panels behind me is just dramatically different. We've used cheaper solar panels on our previous two smaller scale builds, and there's a really, really big quality difference, and you just feel it when you touch them, um, and, and we've loved having them. And here we are under the panels, and this is covering something I didn't give an overview of, but this is the racking system for all of our solar panels. And the main reason I wanted to jump back down here is there was a lot of feedback and concerns about our racking system from some of our previous videos. So we built this all out of pressure treated lumber. I designed the thing myself. It wasn't anything professionally designed and it was built for under $300. That was a huge part uh, because we wanted to make it budget friendly and a lot of the other systems we were looking at or options of how to build it costed upwards of a couple thousand dollars. Now there were some concerns of its performance in wind. I think recently we got a comment that said the first 70 mile per hour wind gust would blow it over. 15 months later, baby. Here it is, still standing strong. We've had no issues at all. Actually, as soon as we built this and put it all together, we had a really, really bad windstorm with 60 to 70 mile per hour winds. And I came out here and I watched everything. And while the ends have a little bit of flex, they're able to flex independently and the rigidness and strength of the solar panels themselves have been fantastic. Now, earlier when I talked about the quality difference of solar panels, both of our mobile rigs, our solar panels have micro cracked. That doesn't mean the glass itself 
of cracks, but within the array, there's just little micro cracks. And we had the worst winter of storms that we've had here so far with lots and lots of wind. And I've recently scanned over all of the panels and there's not a micro crack anywhere. None of the screws are driving out. Everything's still standing strong. So say what you want, it's working pretty awesome here. All right, now our battery. There's gonna be a little bit of a difference of this over our solar array, but I'll start with quality itself. This Mammoth battery has performed incredibly for us. We haven't had any issues with it whatsoever. And when it comes to the convenience of installation, the ability to just plug and play, not dealing with battery cables or racking systems or anything, literally just plop in a 300 pound battery, difficult part, but plop in a 300 pound battery in place, plugging it into your system and being good to go, that part was incredible. One part that I'll call out that I wish it had was self-heating. That's a really, really nice piece to have. And if your battery's in a climate controlled area, that doesn't matter. But where our battery sits, it's not climate controlled. If you're not familiar, if the battery temperature of a lithium battery is below 32 degrees, it cannot be charged safely. Thankfully, our system does have cold temperature cutoff, so it won't charge and damage the battery if it's too cold. But if it was self-heating, it could use its own power to heat it and then allow it to charge even when we do get cold temperatures here, like 10 degrees or so. And just remember, I've said this in previous videos, that's the temperature of the battery internally itself. It's always way warmer than the ambient air. So when it's 25 degrees ambient air outside, the battery is warmer because it's being used so it could still charge. I'm talking about when it gets cold, cold. And then battery capacity, the 9,600 watt hours that we have behind here. 80% of the time, it's all we need and it's perfect. But that 20% of the time kind of sucks. And when I say sucks, it's, it's nothing that can't just simply be solved with a gas powered generator like what we have. Um, but I would say in an ideal world where just money didn't matter, I guess, I would like to have double this battery capacity. And examples of when that would really help is when we have a really hot and humid night and the sun's down already, but God, camper's just still really, really warm and we want to run that AC a little bit longer. This allows us to go for a while before we have to shut down the AC, but it'd be really nice to not have to think about it as much. Or in the winter when you've had five rainy and fully cloudy days in a row, although you're basically offsetting your power intake throughout the day, at night you are discharging it. So over time you will deplete it. Having double that capacity would allow us to get through any scenario like that that we've encountered here. Now along with the double battery capacity, ideal world scenario, I'll give you another one if you're designing your system that I think is friggin' awesome and I would love to have here. And that's having a propane powered battery backup system that can automatically turn on when your battery level reaches a certain threshold. Now, this is a thing, I'm not making it up. It's pretty easy to do. What's beautiful about a propane generator backup system is they're not incredibly high cost and you could have a reserve of a giant amount of fuel. So how that would work is you would have an inverter charger system that's able to detect the battery threshold and then send a signal to a special propane powered generator telling it to click on. It would click on, charge your battery up to whatever threshold you then determine, and then it'll shut off. Then if it goes down to that threshold again, it kicks back on. If it doesn't for six months, generator stays off until it does. And back to the inverter charger, 99.9% .9 of the time, this is doing everything we need. So when we're talking about the 6,000 watts of output, I think it's the right fit for us here. The only niche scenario that we see ourselves maybe running into its limitations is when Cass's parents come, they bring their trailer, and we both have our air conditionings running on a hot day. Still wouldn't fully reach the limitations of the 6,000 watts, but it's close enough to be a concern. But that is such a niche scenario for us that it doesn't matter. And what we do to alleviate that, we just put them on our really large portable power stations so that they're technically on their own inverter that could then be slow charged from this system. Now this inverter is made by Rich Solar. We've had Rich Solar products in other builds that we've done in the past and we really like them. I do believe this one is discontinued so you're not going to be able to purchase it but just calling out one thing that I wish it had that you can keep an eye on in the system that you buy is the ability to communicate with it. So that means having an app on your phone that you could actually monitor what's going on within your solar system 
It sounds a little silly, but it is incredibly useful when you are fully off grid, especially when you're away from the property. And especially if you're away for a few days, you could monitor and see everything going on. And if something needs help, either you could come home or you could send somebody to check it out. And lastly, a quick mention to Shop Solar, who we did partner with in the past. Again, this video isn't sponsored, but our thoughts on working with them it was great. It was pretty seamless. Uh, they have resources for you to work with to actually design your system with. And that's really helpful if you're not familiar with solar as much. And even for me who was familiar with smaller scale solar systems, I was a lot less familiar with a larger system, with a 48 volt system, and with systems that are pushing this much power through them. So from our experience, we would definitely recommend reaching out to Shop Solar and chatting with them a little bit and seeing if offerings that they had actually meet the needs of what you're trying to do. And that's it, that's our system. We love it. Couple things that we mentioned to you that we would change or in an ideal world we could have more of, but overall it works great for us here and it is fully meeting our electrical needs. So if you liked today's video, you're interested in learning more about solar or you just thought, wow, that kid has some pretty friggin' cool hair, make sure you subscribe to our channel. Cass and I are just documenting our unique lifestyle here, sharing our adventures, sharing our travel and sharing our alternative life with y'all. Thanks a lot for watching, cheers.